So we were in the process of a refresh of our existing 480 volt systems anyway to dramatically improve the efficiency, improve the generator interface, and make a bunch of technical improvements that do translate to value for the customer. And we said, hey, now's the time to do a 600 volt using the latest and greatest of everything that we have. And that makes us stand out now in the market versus the other alternatives for 600 volts. So in the 93-95, when we enhanced the product, we made a huge deal about improving the efficiency. And the reason we did is because that gives you the biggest bang for your buck. Every fraction of a percent of efficiency improvement is a huge deal. And after that, there are significant things like maintenance, consumables in the UPS like fans and capacitors that have to be replaced every few years. What does that cost and how does that impact my total cost of ownership? The clients are getting smarter and they realize if they haven't considered that, they could end up paying a lot more uh, over the long term. The data center is the most common application that we see for these types of UPSs, but we do notice that we see a more and more requirement for folks that need continuous power or conditioned power that aren't a data center application. Uh, so there's quite a few other applications that are what we would call light industrial. And the reality is any kind of factory floor automation. For example, if I have a chemical plant and I'm using a computer to control the, con uh, the acid content of a huge vat of chemicals, etc., I need that computer to be on all the time and I need to know what the content of my 50,000 gallon tank of acid is. Otherwise, I have to throw it out somewhere and start over. So these kind of applications, while they're not traditional data center, they are very critical and it's absolutely essential that they have power. But our customers are not limited to the end user. We have the, uh, the uh, design engineer and consultant that's working with the product and designing it into a building or a facility and that type of thing. Now, how many folks in here are engineers and consultants? A lot of them. We need to make sure that our product makes your life easier. So you're more likely to specify it and offer it to your clients because you know it's a good product and it's going to do the job. And in your day-to-day -day job, we want to make sure that it's easy to configure, easy to specify. You can do with it what you need to do. We also have the installing contractor who have to actually pull the wire and do the real work of installing these machines. How about contractors? Anybody here install UPSs a lot? Yeah, there we go. Again, it's about making your life easier. If I can install one UPS a little more quickly, bring it to, to, uh, to usefulness a little more quickly, uh, with fewer raw materials and the guy down the road, the contractor down the road that's quoting a lower price, on maybe cheaper materials, etc., then those kind of are the kind of benefits that we want to make sure we bring forth with our product. For the electrical contractor and the designer, we want to be able to offer them as much flexibility as possible. You can do it this way or you can do it that way. When the client changes their mind three months into the project, you can modify it and do it the other way. And that needs to be as seamless and painless as possible. This product is available right now for the Canadian market and the lead time uh, on these first units is going to be about four to six weeks. And as we ramp up production there, the lead times will get down closer to four weeks. Things that impact lead time are external switch gear, customization, and those kind of things can stretch lead times back out to eight or ten weeks. But for the basic UPS and batteries, which is what the vast majority of clients buy, we're talking about four weeks.